we weren't really living with a great intention at that time other than just going to work going outside as much as we possibly could and they said what can we do to pivot or change and just live this life of being untethered and just adventure and growth. Welcome back to the Man of Mastery podcast. My name is Michael Bullock, your host, founder of this podcast. And as you know, we are here to help you get from successful to truly exceptional, integrated holistic success. What, what that looks like, what that feels like, what some people call that, it's our legacy, it's our impact, it's what we leave on this world. But more importantly, how do you get to that true level of balance, success and connection and relationships now, today? How do you live it now and leave it later? That's legacy. Well. Today's guest, I'm super excited to introduce this amazing couple, Casey and Andy, panful of fierce planet adventures. These guys have sold their home, sold their possessions, and are traveling the world on a mission to inspire purpose, passion, and lives of self-mastery in others. Super cool couple, and I'm really excited to bring them to you today. In just a moment, before we dive in, one if you haven't already, please hit the, the link, the bio link on social or go directly to our website and sign up for the email notification. So you'll find out about new episodes like this, as well as news on other things we have coming out here in 2021. Second, for guys who want a group of amazing men who are pursuing those same things, who understand the, the power of growth and a life of self-mastery and service, who are exploring happiness and fulfillment and purpose and passion, that kind of peer group and accountability, responsibility, transparency, a peer group like that. We have a private group on Facebook for men looking for those things for Man of Mastery. There's a Man of Mastery page on Facebook, but jump in, hit the link and apply to the group if that would support you and interest you. All right, that being said, Let's dive in with Casey and Andy of Fierce Planet Adventures, episode 73. All right, we're rolling. Casey, Andrew, how are you guys? Wonderful. How are you doing, Michael? Awesome. Good to see you again. Let me uh, let me set you guys up here real quick. So this is Andy and Casey Panfil. Am I saying it right? You are. I should have asked, but take my best shot at it. Of Fierce Planet Adventures. Uh, Andy, I love your title, uh, Chief Adventure Officer. That's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. Casey, it's do you kind, have of a, a, kind of a made up title, but uh, it fit, right? I've, I had yeah. never heard one better. I love that. Do you have a good one too, Casey? The uh, Chief Creative Officer. Chief Creative. Equally good. Well, look, I'll let you guys talk a little bit about introducing your, your mission and what you guys are and do with Fierce Planet Adventures. But let me let me say it this way, because if I I want to get this out there before I forget, because I really admire what you guys are doing. When COVID was kind of early on and we found ourselves with more time to sit around the, the table for dinner and, and be like, you know, real humans and a family again, my wife pulled out this amazing book, which is all these thought provoking questions. So we would take one question a night and talk about it at dinner. And this question that we hit early in, in COVID was what is, something along the lines of what is something you would do if, you know, if you could do anything or if you, weren't fearful or, you know, you can make the most courageous decision you want to do something along those lines. And my wife said, you know what? I'd sell everything and travel. <laughs> like, yeah. That's awesome. And uh, that... very few people actually do that. And I think that's kind of the premise for the, the, the journey and the adventure you guys are on. So with that, I really admire what you're doing. Tell, tell me more about it. All right. So yeah. Um, Casey, if it's okay with you, I'll start off and you can kind of yeah. tag team here or jump in. Um, we had gone. We, we had both worked for the same company for a little over 15 years, and the company was great, right? Hope I, I can say it. REI, um, sure. Kind of REI had on great company. Love the people I work with. Um, but we both just got to a point where we were ready for something different, a transition. And one thing that we're both passionate about is outdoor adventure and trying to bring that passion to others. And you know, looking back at my history, there's been some iterations of that. 
Um, but this was our attempt or is our attempt to, to bring it to, to the wider masses and bring the positivity and, and the growth potential that the outdoor environment really provides to folks. So we got to the point where um, we actually went on a, a paid sabbatical for a month. Our, our sabbatical is lined up because um, REI, great company, right? After 50, or is it 10 years, they give you a sabbatical or is it 15? I can't uh, remember 15, now. 15, yeah. 15. Um, so we started off ice climbing in year A. Um, we went to uh, a trip, a week long trip to Belize adventure trip. And then we spent two weeks on the big island of Hawaii camping and backpacking and hiking and swimming and snorkeling and, um, you know, we got back and, you know, this had been something that was percolating for us for a while, but we just never really pinned it down. We, we looked at each other and said, maybe it's time, right? And so we kind of set a timeline out. It still wasn't hard and fast. I was traveling a lot for work. And I think I came home at one point and just said, you know what, I think I'm ready to do this. So we put together the rest of the framework of our plan. And literally we sold almost everything um, except for what we could fit in our car adventure wise you know we mailed a couple boxes to to some family of things we wanted to hold on to and we just hit the road and um, our first stop or major stop was um, in eastern Tennessee where Casey's family's from our plan is was to adventure around the Smoky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains for I don't know three or four months and then head back out west to uh, go after some big hairy audacious goals we have um, for mountaineering and exploring the Rocky Mountain, continuing to explore the Rocky Mountains. And then COVID hit, right? So pretty much the country set, shut down. I mean, I'm not gonna go over the story. Everybody knows it. We had to shift fire a little bit. Um, I was currently at that time, I had just started um, going through the uh, Unbeatable Mind coaching program. And so it was, it kind of just rolled into, into a, a good fit and we figured out, well, what, what, what else can we do to help spread our message? So we decided to um, go all in on podcasting. So we've just kind of started our podcast. We've got what, seven or eight episodes out there. We've got a few in the can. And, Releasing um, number 10. Yeah. Number 10. Yeah. So, you know, getting back to your original question is it was really a, a bit scary at first. I mean, you know, no net, right? There's no safety net here. There's no job. There's no career. It's just us. And, you know, once we, we shut the door, we handed over the keys and we hit the road, there was no looking back. Right. And um, it's been an interesting, wild roller coaster ride since then. And I wouldn't change a thing about it. It's been wonderful so far. Yeah, I have to agree. It's just, life-changing uh, absolutely and going back to the podcast starting up the fierce planet adventures and trying to focus a little bit more on um just goes back to our foundation of i think unbeatable mind program is kind of what started us on this path um, basically finding out that our passions lied elsewhere and we weren't really living with a great intention at that time other than just going to work going outside as much as we possibly could. And basically said, what can we do to pivot or change and just live this life of being untethered and just adventure and growth? And so that's kind of what we did. And uh, yeah, it's been quite a journey. <laughs> yeah, I'm super excited for you guys. I know it, it's probably taken a little bit longer to get traction because of what you just described and, and the state of sort of travel right now. But you know, to me, you guys went, uh, so there's all this stuff sort of coming together, right? If anybody's watching the YouTube mm -hmm. version of this, we're laughing because Andy and I happen to be wearing the same, speaking of brand, same Spartan <laughs> hoodie, uh, right? And I'm wearing a hat that comes out of the unbeatable mind thing where, you know, the ecosystem where we all met for the first time. And, and you know, your stated mission, if you don't mind my reading it, Fierce Planet Adventures is Andy and Casey Panful a married couple on a mission to inspire 100,000 people to live a life of purpose, passion, and self-mastery through the Unbeatable Mind operating system. And it really is such an incredible tool and framework to help people dig in to things that they probably always sense they need to spend time on, but have a hard time doing it or just put it off. And things like living in integrity with your real 
passions and, and purpose. So I find it so cool that you guys are not only doing what you're doing, but you've also constructed it in such a way that you're not just two people going out to enjoy the world. You're going to take the coaching element of it and take the podcast element of it to try to serve and inspire a hundred thousand people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. This has been pretty exciting for us. And um, you know, kind of a little backstory here, whether it's, you know, the universe kind of directing us or divine intervention, what have you, um, to kind of set this whole thing up where it started was when I was traveling a lot for work, um, I was a senior asset protection manager, um, covering uh, at, at certain times up to four districts in the company. So I was on the road pretty much a whole year, um, listening to a whole lot of audio books, um, during my flights and, and car travels, um, stuff like American sniper 13 hours and, but also business books. Right. And this book, audiobook kept showing up in my recommendations, Unbeatable Mind, Mark Devine, Mark's staring down the, the wolf, right? And I'm like, you know, I just don't, I'm not interested in another self-help book, another self-development book that I'm just not interested, right? Because they, they all fall short, in my opinion, many of them do. Um, but it just kept kind of showing up month after month after month. And I said, you know, what, what the heck? I've got a credit. I'm going to listen to this. You know, he's, he's former military, you know, Navy SEAL. What have I got to lose? Right. So, and then it, it kind of hit me as we're going through this, we're listening to his book as we're going out um, on camping trips and hiking trips and things on the drives. And I realized it was the integrated training program that I had been looking for my whole life, but didn't necessarily knew that I needed. Um, as an example, you know, I had been really good at maybe working in one or two domains for, you know, um, either the physical domain was really strong for me and I was really fit working out, hiking 14,000 foot peaks, or, you know, I was doubling down and focusing on my mental growth, you know, learning new jobs and the physical would, would go by the wayside, right? I didn't know how to quite integrate it all. And then there it was. And, and that is where the pivot happened for us. You know, we kind of looked at each other and said, wow, this is really cool. And there's this online training program called Foundations. You, should, we, should, we, should we take it? Yeah, we're all in, right? And, um, you know, we've just kind of never looked back since from that point. It's just been an amazing journey. And so set from that point, um, right after I left REI, we we're, were, we were closing down our house and, uh, our, our residence in, um, in Denver and Mark did this, um, Hey, we want to become a coach. So I, I dialed in and, um, got my free one hour coaching session with Catherine divine, um, awesome individual, right? We've had her on our podcast. She's got a, a new book out on meditation and, uh, it just was synchronicity, right? You know, um, I've, I've been out from REI just a week. This opportunity opened up and I decided to go for it. The people I have met, what I've learned is just an amazing environment. And now that I'm through, Casey's actually in the training and um, she's on, on track to become an unbeatable mind coach as well. Nice. Congratulations. So I let me you. ask, and since Casey, you're in it now, I'll sort of ask on your, your perspective about UM, in addition to just uh, then becoming a coach to serve others through it. But it's, uh, how would I describe it? So my, I, I stumbled on it as well. I don't, I don't know how we all find it. But as I started to share with my wife, some of the things that I was learning, studying, applying, it's, it's been very parallel to things that she studied in other realms, whether it was through meditation explicitly, et cetera. But, uh, you know, everybody finds their own energy and style that they're drawn to. But I agree, I, I probably sound like an evangelist for this stuff, because I think there is really some kind of a, a secret sauce there to integrating it, the different domains of development, including integrated within physical training, that those of us who enjoy doing that it just resonates. And then there are all these other dimensions to it, including, I think one of the most powerful things is the community, the, the other people that you meet, the, the mentality, the growth that you get. Um, and inspiration through those others and the accountability that, that comes within that. So what does, 
what, what have you guys found, Casey? How, how does that look for you as an individual? How has it been for you guys as a couple? And then how does that cast forward into becoming a coach for others? Yeah, and again, just to highlight how powerful and um, when we first started, uh, I guess we both were at a place where we had said to each other, you know, it felt like something was missing from our life at some point. And once we started doing this program and doing it together, it just kind of opened up some space for us to not only dig a little deeper into ourselves, but to grow as a couple. I mean, it opened up a door for better communication, understanding, uh, ways to spend time together that was a little bit different, like meditation or box breathing together, yoga together. So kind of sharing that energy in one space. Uh, I think it's done wonders for us as a couple personally. Um, as an individual, I, it's difficult for me to say just how much Unbeatable Mind has changed my life. Um, I struggled in my life with a lot of things and this was the first thing that really worked for me and opened my eyes up that I do have some control over my thoughts and how I present myself to the world, basically how I react to things. And it was just mind blowing, just the other world this opened up for us. And when you go through changes like that, they're just so profound. It's really hard not to want to share that with people and it's really hard to not want people to see this view of the world and uh, for me that's what becoming a coach is about is helping other people find their light and their path and just bringing them that amazing benefit that that's brought into our lives how would you i can completely relate and it, once you have that experience, you want to share that forward and, and share that passion. Everybody has a different need and probably different types of, of results. So I, some people could go like, well, why do I need a coach or a coach is expensive? I, I also find with a lot of people who are either, you know, they're immersed in the cadence of a, of a career in life or, or they're already successful sometimes you kind of fall in this trap of, of why would I need a coach? You know, I'm, I'm already successful on my own. I'm, I'm already at the top of my game, you know, things like that. So when it comes to investing in the process, investing financially in wanting to improve yourself, or even just the recognition of, Hey, why, why would I need a coach? I'm an adult. You know, how do, how do you think about that? Um, perspective. I think is one of the big pieces of that is when you're living in your own head, which most of us do, <laughs> um, it's really hard to see, well, I'll use Andy's phrase here. When you're inside the bottle, it's really hard to read the label on the outside. So having a coach or a guide that can help pick up some of those subtleties, uh, patterns maybe that you don't see in yourself uh, words or phrases that you use that you don't pick up on yourself, having an outside perspective to help dial those things in and help you become aware of some of these patterns that may be subconscious for you, that in itself is invaluable. Um, that and having a little bit of accountability <laughs> is a big piece of that too. Someone to put a date to things and help guide you down the right path and make sure you stay on it. Yeah, especially if you're, you know, maybe running a company, CEO, founder, something like that. It, it, when it comes to work, sometimes it's hard to find accountability. You don't have anybody that's yeah. going to say no or call you out in that way yeah, that a coach exactly. might, right? That's right? very true. Well, this, I mean, this is all about growth, right? And, and growth as a, as a person and the way you show up in all the other elements of your life, whether it's work or relationships, things like that. And uh, maybe going back to how you bundle that together with your passion for travel and, and the focus of your, of your podcast, 
I think one of the things that's super cool about your story, yeah, COVID hit as you're launching this stuff. But the other thing COVID's done is really shake the belief system for folks to kind of go, what what does stability look like? <laughs> what does security mean yeah. in, in my life? It's not necessarily a salaried job or I don't know, I owned commercial real estate. Now that looks crazy, right? <laughs> so we're kind of we're kind of shaking that bottle up and and rethinking things. That's one of the things I love about travel is you never really know what's going to happen. You plan a trip, but there's always the unexpected stuff. And that seems like the, the magic. So I, I kind of think you've, you've probably started at the perfect time. Yeah. You know, that that's, well, you have to reframe it, right? You know, if you tell yourself that, you know, COVID hit and I'm, and I'm a victim of, of COVID and, you know, there's nothing I can do, you know, you're just, you're talking yourself into failure if you shift your mindset, the, your belief system, maybe a little bit about what's possible, this is a time of opportunity for folks as well. You know, we didn't know anything about podcasting and maybe we still don't, but we're getting better with every episode, right? And had this not happened, we probably wouldn't have started a podcast and we wouldn't have had the opportunity to interview so many wonderful, just amazing people and, and get different perspectives on life and how to operate and move through life. Um, so, yeah, you know, sometimes you just have to shift fire. And I think one of the, the neat things about Unbeatable Mind and how we apply it to either Fierce Planet Adventures or just our, our daily lives is, you know, Semper Gumby, right? Always be flexible. You've, you know, we're living in a volatile, chaotic, uncertain, and ambiguous world, right? We talk about VUCA and it's here to stay, at least for the foreseeable future. And, you know, you can either get crushed by the wave of change or you can roll with it. And, you know, rolling with it, it's so much more fun, you know, or at least it's, it's, it's not as miserable as being crushed by it. So, you know, embrace the change, embrace the chaos and um, open up your life, expand your horizons. Yeah, that, I mean, change is constant, right? And change is also a catalyst for growth. I mean, you think about you know, climbing a mountain or lifting weights or whatever, you get stronger by doing things that are hard. And oftentimes hard is uncomfortable, but you can reframe that that mindset. I, I was actually, uh, I'll send you a link to this guy. If you, if you don't know him, somebody forwarded a uh, guy on Instagram yesterday, I don't recall the account off the top of my head, but he's a climber and uh, he'll pick up a topic each week. And the one yesterday was about the process. So it was about, you know, get your mind off the goal, get your mind off the outcome and embrace the process, embrace the journey, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And that's where, that's where the fun stuff really happens. So when you, you can take this 90 degree turn in your view on comfort zone on growth on change on volatility you realize well that's exactly where i want to be yeah that's where the fun is right absolutely that's where you learn the most about yourself that's <laughs> one way or another right what <laughs> yeah. do you guys so uh, you mentioned uh, from your sabbatical with rei that you did some international travel when COVID allows is that where you guys are headed or are you is fierce planet going to be more of a domestic sort of a topic? Yeah, you know, we've talked about this at length. And um, I, I think what we're looking at right now for 2021 is a bit more domestic, but within the 50 states. Um, you know, we're hoping to get back out to URA in January, or February to do some more ice climbing. And um, I've got so many frequent flyer miles that we can probably go in back and forth to Hawaii two or three times for free. Um, so we're looking at getting back there and, uh, maybe hooking up with some friends that we have that live in Hawaii or, um, you know, backpacking in Hawaii as well. Um, we have a goal of finishing off, uh, Colorado's hundred highest peaks, the centennial peaks. And, you know, I've had 20 years to do it. And for whatever reason, you know, life just happened and I got about 50 of them done. And then we kind of started doing them together and we're like, well, let's reset this. This is a lot of fun. We're having a great time with it. And, and that's the perfect opportunity to learn about yourself, right? You're at high altitude environment. The weather is uncertain. Even if it shows on your app, a clear and sunny windless day, that can change in seconds, right? You know, some of these mountains make their own weather. 
Um, so it's always a different mountain, even if you've been on it a few times, um, it, you know, it can be a different experience. International travel, we would love to get back to Belize. Um, there's some stuff we left undone there. Um, one of my uh, coaching boat crew members, um, him and his wife just moved to France. They were actually, they actually lived in, in Denver with us, near us. And we met them face to face before we all split town. So they went to France, we went to uh, Eastern Tennessee. And so they've got a nice little brewery they're uh, starting to open up and we're hoping to catch up with them in Europe for a bit. Um, but we'll see where it takes us, right? We've got, we've got things on our bucket list and we're just gonna keep on going down. You know, Kilimanjaro's on there, Machu Picchu's on there. Um, you know, Aconcagua's on there, um, Denali's on there. We'll see where it goes. Super cool. All right, where is uh, Ure? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, Ure. It's um, in southwestern Colorado. Okay. Um, it's, I think, about an hour. It's not too far from Telluride, maybe about an hour away from Telluride. Just an amazingly beautiful place. Um, they call it the uh, little Switzerland of America. And the peaks are dramatic. And the, the city or the town of Ure, there's actually this canyon. It's called Box Canyon. And every, every winter they farm ice there. They've got a pen stock set or, you know, that they use for their water flow. And they've got sprinkler systems set up that they, they just light up every night and it forms ice. And it is the perfect environment to either learn or expand your ice climbing skills. It's just a beautiful area. Can't recommend it highly enough. And also where we got engaged. So <laughs> it holds so a special place special, in our hearts. Special place. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That sounds amazing. I, I, I got to put it on my list. I, I mean, I love, I love travel. Uh, I traveled a lot for work, but of course, personal travel is a lot of fun. We travel you know, as a family. We use Spartan races as a, as an opportunity to do these little mini vacations and go different places around the country, around the world. Again, one of these days, I, <laughs> so you guys, you know, you talked about your experience together at, at Unbeatable Mind uh, training events and things like that. So there was uh, recently an Unbeatable Mind Summit event and I took my wife and my son. So my son's 12 right now. So kind of pushing the envelope on getting, you know, getting sort of UM kids going and what that might look yeah. like. And, and he had a blast and some of it was in his, you know, in his sweet spot. And some of it was way outside of his comfort zone, the, the ice bath, you know, he was confident going in and that just slapped him right in the face. And then my wife, it was, it was amazing for her to sort of experience firsthand or see, you know, Mark and, and Jim and Boomer and other coaches and then, uh, and the crew, you know, the, some of the community that were able to make it here live here in, in, in the COVID world, but sort of see what, you know, what we've all been up to. And I think it left a good uh, understanding with her impression with her of, of what this is all about at the same time you know she did come out of it saying you guys are that shit crazy but <laughs> she already knew that about me anyway she just figured out that i'd hooked up with a tribe of other crazy people <laughs> but you know we love doing this stuff together and one of the things that i really i, I wanted wanted to instill and inspire in, in my son and, and so we've made international travel in particular uh, an emphasis my, my wife grew up in mexico so my son's bilingual dual national. And we wanted to get out and, and hit the world. And we started doing it early, even when he was young. And there'll be stuff that you know, he doesn't remember or doesn't remember the most of it, um, you know, from Europe when he was maybe six, you know, different things, Eiffel Tower, mm -hmm. you know, gondola. And actually, I think he slept through the gondola in Venice, right? But, but there are little <laughs> things and you start getting out there and just that stuff in itself becomes so uncomfortable. And so it becomes, you know, a development thing as, as a person whether it's language or figuring out a different currency or driving on the other side of the road in Australia, things mm -hmm. like that, that just, just expand your mind. So I, uh, I hadn't really traveled internationally myself until my really late twenties. And for me, it was inspired by a, a buddy that I got to know from New Zealand. And he said, look, as, as a culture, as a country, we, we realize we are a small country and we're pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And so there's this danger of, you know, the mindset of just getting isolated uh, mm -hmm. from the world and everything becoming homogenous. It's a beautiful country, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's great in itself <laughs> to explore because like we see it as part of our education for our children. There's school and then there's travel and it becomes 
part of your growth as, as a human. So he inspired, I went uh, after that and did, I took a seven month sabbatical nice. at the nice. backpack and uh, just got out in the, in the world. It's such amazing experience and, you know, places that I may never see again, places I hope I get to go back to and definitely places I want to take my son and get him to experience some, some corners of the world that you know, yeah. maybe you would n- never otherwise go or hadn't heard of things like that. Yeah. So absolutely. were you backpacking from location to location or doing like a through hike or? So I, I got an around the world airplane ticket. I cashed in airline miles. <laughs> nice. So, you know, it would be fly somewhere and then go do something. So, you know, landed in Kathmandu and then ended up doing different things around uh, Nepal, one of which was a two week track around uh, the Annapurna. So, you know, something like that would be on the longer end of the track or, you know, fly down to Chile and hit different places down there and, you know, do, do a track through the Torres del Paine, th- you know, things like that. So we'd pick up, fly somewhere else, do yeah. something else. Oh, that's Very awesome. Cool. And I love too, that you're exposing your son to these experiences and just have to give you a little props for that. Cause I mean, I certainly can remember trips with my parents that, I mean, they still stick with me today and it's just amazing to have parents that will take you out and expose you to different cultures and uncomfortable situations so that you can grow into a more functioning adult. <laughs> exactly. And, and appreciate that uh, there's, there's unity and difference, right? Mm-hmm. No one way is right. And yeah. people have different preferences or you might find things you don't like you know, food or squat toilets or something. And you come, you know, when you come home, you appreciate, you appreciate the style of whatever more. it is that, that, that you like. And you never really know Thank what memory is going to, going to stick. Right. Right. But these days we've got, we got so much ubiquitous film pictures, video. Uh, I, I'll give you another quick, I, I, I want to hear more from you guys. So I don't want to monopolize this, but just reminded me of a, of an amazing story from Australia uh, a couple of years ago that uh, if you ever get a chance to meet Bibiana, my wife, she, um, you know, she has an amazing ability to see people in the world in a way that, that, uh, that I wish I could. So we're, we're there, our first, uh, sort of first big outing uh, out of Adelaide, stopped there first to visit some friends. And we drive up into the, into the hills, into the mountains outside of Adelaide. And we start talking about uh, koalas. And our Aussie buddy is like, look, you're going to see koalas in Australia, right? But you're not going to see them in the wild. And you're definitely not going to see one today. Right. So maybe I was like, we're, we're going to see a koala today. Like guaranteed it's, it's happening. I'm, I'm you know, like the it's universe gonna is going to provide. And I kid you not, like we're coming around a curve up this mountain and there were two cars stopped and we had to stop because there was a koala in the road trying to cross the road and get over a guardrail <laughs> back to, you know, back to its eucalyptus tree. She oh, literally just great. summoned this koala. Nice. <laughs> You manifested it and there right. it was. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Talk about unbeatable mind. That's, it's pretty crazy. Um, well, how are you guys? Uh, how does the podcast? So I haven't had a chance to listen to one yet. Looking forward to doing that. What, what are your topics or does it depend on your guest? Is it all travel focused or how do you unite the unbeatable mind coaching and message that you guys have with the, the Fierce Planet Adventures mission? Yeah, you know, it, it's been an iterative process. And um, I think what we've what we finally landed on is instead of just having it so pigeonholed into just adventure, just at just travel, we've opened it up to uh, incorporate pretty much the, the five domains of unbeatable mind. So it could be the physical, mental, emotional, intuitional, or Kokoro, um, you know, never quit spirit. And um, so we've had some really interesting guests along the way, you know, Catherine Devine, who is um, on the uh, Five Mountain Council for Tip of the Spear. Um, she's a, a coach with UM and does a, an amazing job. Um, Kokoro Yoga, which we're practitioners of. And um, we've had uh, Jay Middleton on. You don't, probably most people don't know Jay. Jay is a family friend of us. Um, we worked with him at REI, but he's a big bicyclist and he's a cancer survivor. So he's got a pretty interesting story on, on, on shift um, in mindset and outlook on life and how overcoming cancer has really been an interesting you know, challenge for him. Um, it's changed his whole outlook. Um, 
we've had we uh, we're going to be having a uh, Mark England on with um, basically you know verbal um, you know using powerful verbal statements um, pro pro vocabulary. There you go. There you go. Vocabulary. Um, you know, we we've got a, a a a guest who is um, a Kundalini yogi um, who talks. He's also a, a psychotherapist and relationship um, counselor. So very interesting. You know, that one's um, going to be published in a little bit. So it's pretty much within the, the the framework. Oh, I can't I can't forget our five backpacks family. Um, they are just so awesome. <laughs> um anyway so yeah it's uh pretty much within that framework and our goal is, is to just inspire people to to shift their mindset to look at life differently and whether it's somebody that's talking about um, relationships and kundalini yoga or surviving cancer or traveling the world with your three kids you know it's it's I'm, we're hoping that it's going to open up a whole new world of, to people and show them that that the life that they're living if they're not happy that they can change what what's going on there they can you know embrace some change embrace the challenge um, take on different challenges in life um, and when they're faced with an unexpected challenge you know they don't have to shrink from it they can face it head on and and use it as a growth experience um, you know, for us, for, for everybody, I think we all go through things in life that set us back or hit us, you know, blindside us. And it's not how, you know, it's how we respond to it, right? It's, you know, do we let it get us down? Do we let it destroy us? Um, do we let it define us? Or do we get up stronger than we were before, ready to take on the next challenge, right? And it's not easy, but it's simple. You know, we use that that philosophy a lot with unbeatable mind is there's a lot of simplicity here, but not it's not necessarily easy. So we're hoping to provide folks with that, that pathway to just expand their horizons. And when we do podcasts on adventure and travel, um, you know, there's a lot to unpack there um, from all the mountains. But you know, it's, it's more than just physical. It's just, it's more than just mental. It's more than just um, emotional. You know, for example, if we were to do a podcast on climbing Colorado's 14,000 foot peaks, you know, when you go out on, on a hike to, to do, or a mountaineering trip to do the peaks, you pretty much cover all five mountains of unbeatable mind, right? You know, you tap into every single one of those. And when you embrace the experience, that's where the fun is. That's where the growth is. And I think you mentioned it earlier, Michael, is that, you know, don't be too focused on the outcome of maybe in this example, reaching the summit of a peak, but enjoy the experience along the way. Check out the streams that, that uh, flow down the side of the mountain. Check out the herd of uh, mountain goats that are, they're watching you as you're hiking up, right? It's just, there's so much to, to be experienced. So I guess I kind of went off on a tangent here, but that's, you know, that's where we're headed with this. No, that's, that's a great way to explain it and super cool uh, preview of, of episodes and episodes to come that I haven't tapped into yet. So for people who may not know, we just hit these five domains or five mountains real quickly. So physical, I think physical training is pretty self-explanatory to people. When we say mental it's sort of the continuous learning throughout life, right? Mm -hmm. Emotional, I, I think of that in, in it's deep, but uh, in terms of something that I and a lot of us struggle with is just emotional self-control sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, intuitional, you know, that sort of gut feel or maybe tapping into more of a right brain or situational awareness is important in right. a dangerous yeah. world. And then Kokoro and the never quit spirit you mentioned, uh, crucibles, you know, setting those big, hairy, mm -hmm. audacious goals, those, those kind of big things that test the spirit and test all five things. And then we talk about integrated training because all these things are pretty easy to conceptualize, easy to read about, but they're a lot harder in practice, especially when you get hit with something hard or, you know, the old Mike Tyson quote, you get punched in the mouth, things, mm -hmm. things change. They look scary real quickly. You know, you're, suddenly breathing hard trying to climb a peak or you know it suddenly you question whether you're gonna 
be capable of the crucible you're you're signed up for or that you know that process that you're in it's easy to say yep. <laughs> forget about the goal just enjoy the process when the process sucks or life sucks you know coming back to having that mindset embracing it those kind of things it's it's not as easy as it sounds so crucibles man made crucibles are a great way to train for life's crucibles mm. I think you guys have mentioned signing up for a seal fit crucible at one point. Did, did that happen for you guys yet? Or is that postponed? It, uh, we postponed the first one because we were both uh, rehabbing some injuries. And then the last two times around it got postponed due to COVID. So we've got an eye to uh, March of 2021 to be in uh, Carlsbad, California, um, to do the seal fit. I think we're going to go with a six hour. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, like I said, I, I'm, earlier when we talked, um, I'm rehabbing a, a back injury that I've had for about 30 years that's flared up um, and it's kind of gone down to my hips. So running has been a little bit challenging, but I think I'm at a point where I'm going to start testing it a lot now. So as, as I progress and get stronger again, you know, we'll look, we'll, we've got an eye towards that Kokoro. Um, well, I think we're gonna go with the six hour, right? Um, but uh, yeah, other crucibles, right? Finishing off Colorado's hundred highest peaks, the Centennial Peaks. That's a huge one for me. I love Colorado. I lived there for about 20 years, uh, looking to get back there at some point. Um, Spartan races. We both love, enjoy Spartan races, right? You know, in case yeah, I came to Spartan races, you know, through the UM tribe, the UM community, I had known about them, but I, yeah, I was never really interested. We went and did our first one in Breckenridge, Colorado, a couple of years ago. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so much fun. Why did I wait so long to do this? And it was definitely challenging, right? That, that uh, 5k was actually like five miles instead of three, but it's all good. Right. You know, cause that's kind of, you know, you, you're not quite sure, you know, the, embrace the uncertainty of it. Um, yeah. So wait, what was the question? <laughs> what crucibles you guys have coming up? Just talking about the, that tool set, you know, of man-made crucibles as a, as a sure. growth tool. I feel like, you know, you're talking about doing the six hour seal fit. Casey was sort of smiling a little bit. Was that, was that the, Hey, let's upgrade smile. Let's see if we can train for the, the 12 hour. <laughs> oh no, that was, uh, just anticipation. <laughs> Somebody asked me this morning, which one I'm going to do. I said the three hour, but I don't, I don't think that exists yet. <laughs> Wait, that's an option. <laughs> <laughs> I just made that up. I I'm signed up for March as well, uh, for the 24 oh, hours. So hopefully wonderful. I will, I will see you guys out there. Well, at least we may see you for, for six. six. <laughs> yeah, I hope they put us all together. That would that would be a blast. And yeah. did you guys get the? Did you? I don't know if you got the link. If you were on, or if you got the recording from Coach Mel at Seal Fit, mm -hmm. who uh, oh, she sent it out. Jim Bro ran a log PT training session a few weeks ago for anybody who signed up for a March Crucible. Right, right. Yeah, we we haven't. I've I've got the recording queued up. Um, we're going to go after it probably this, not this weekend, because we're doing the virtual trifecta for Spartan race, but uh, within the next week or two, we're going to kind of start tapping into that. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun one. Jim's, Jim's such an amazing coach on so many levels, but when it comes to the physical training, I mean, he, he himself is, he's just, you know, he's a machine. He turned 58 and he could, you know, he could crush most 18 year olds. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he completed the 50 something hour Kokoro and, and when he coaches these, these training sessions, they are, they're truly integrated training things with breath, the, these five domains, five mountains. And then he's, he's really recently, and you'll, you'll get it in the log PT. He starts, and this goes back to the power of not only having a coach, not only having a framework, having challenges, but having teammates, having a team, mm -hmm. having accountability. He has started putting that team uh, accountability into things. So you get to a place where you've got the sandbag up over your head, you know, your pseudo log and we have an agreement. It's not being mean. We have an agreement that we're going to go for a minute, but if somebody drops, we're going to start over. <laughs> right. So you mm -hmm. become accountable mm -hmm. to performing as a team. Yeah. You know, you touched on a couple interesting points there, Michael. And um, you know, the first one I wanted to address is, all this self-development, all these personal challenges that you go through, uh, all this mental and emotional um, work that you do is great, but why are you doing it? If you're doing it just for yourself, you're probably not going to go very far, right? It's, you know, it's really when you, you take that development and you put it 
uh, out toward out into the world, right? Focus, take to take take the, your eyes off of yourself. Focus on your team. All that self development. You know, with Casey and I, we had alluded to it earlier or mentioned it earlier. Is that we we took on this development as a couple, as a married couple, to to you know really develop our relationship and you know together we've taken on these challenges and it's made our relationship so much stronger um so i guess what i'm trying to say here is when you do these things you're not necessarily doing them just for yourself and then not to do anything with it you want to put it out into the world you want to go do challenges um, whether it's you know at work at your work um, with your teams there or you know, where you volunteer, or perhaps if, you know, you go to church, your church group, um, it's, it's how you show up in the world, right? So you really want to take what you've learned and, and share it with the world and just really show up strongly uh, for the people that you care about. Um, and the other point is, um, I don't remember. <laughs> so you enough. can edit that out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. No, we're just going to roll with it. Life happens. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I think of it, I, I kind of break it down into a few pieces and I completely agree with what you said, but even if somebody wants to be completely selfish uh, uh, and, and opens up to self-development and growth from a completely selfish perspective, I, I got this from one of our uh, coaches in the Unbeatable Mind System, who's a, a PhD. There is science on this that says mm-hmm. the difference between a great leader and an exceptional leader is those who work on themselves because the growth on themselves pays back in all those other ways, right? Mm-hmm. So if you really want to think about it from a selfish perspective, do it for that reason, right? Get a coach, get a system, grow yourself. Even if you don't think there's more to do, there is, right? And that comes back to having that perspective or the somebody to hold up the mirror to your blind spots. The, the second is the, you talk about people who are seeking fulfillment. And I, I, I believe that what a lot of us who have been looking for something fulfilling have lacked where it comes from is you, that service element, doing something greater than ourselves, whether it's to a child, to a community, to others in need, whatever that looks like, the service element of it really is about fulfillment. You know, you guys travel and you said simple, simple isn't easy, but simple often is has the potential for being more fulfilling than, than complex. When we weigh mm. ourselves down with things and complexity and, and clutter, it's a lot harder to find, you know, that path we're supposed to be on. And the third element of it, and we've touched on teams a couple of times here is, is I, I, I find a lot of in, in the corporate world, a lot of successful executives who have a, some level of competitive sports background in their, you know, in their youth mm-hmm. or maybe their college days or whatever that might be. And, if you think back to if you were ever part of an amazing team, a team that had chemistry, something really magical, whether it was sports or a band or work or whatever it might be at the time, maybe you took it for granted or the military or something like that. Right. But in hindsight, those things tend to be fairly rare Mm, and and unique, but they have certain elements, you know, you've got to have a framework you've got some sort of a coach or a leader and you've got, well, you've got, you've got teammates, right? You can't Mm -hmm. be a lone wolf. And usually it comes through having big goals, doing hard things and kind of getting down, embracing the suck, doing those hard things together. And that's where that sort of bond comes from. So I, I, you know, I look at all this stuff that we're doing. It's so amazing because it's got, it's got all those things. Right? You're growing as a person, but you're creating these epic experiences, really, that, that really are profound and unique. Indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what's next for, for you guys? So you're eight to 10 episodes into Fierce Planet Adventures. Uh, you've got really, I, I love how you framed this. It's, it's focused around what you guys are doing or going to do as Unbeatable Mind coaches. You've got the travel potential to inspire other people. Where should people tune in? Um, Podcasts as well as social media, follow your travels, your message, your inspiration, or even reach out to you guys directly. What's, what's best? Casey? Yeah, so right now our podcast is uh, available on YouTube, uh, video format. Uh, we actually will be getting it on some 
podcast specific platforms here uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but Fierce Planet Adventures on YouTube. Uh, also, it's the same handle for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And let's see, you can reach us directly at info at fierceplanetadventures.com uh, or feel free to direct message too. Okay. Perfect. I didn't know you guys started on YouTube. I think that's that's awesome. I did video last, but YouTube's an amazing platform and it's got the Google search engine behind it and mm -hmm. uh, statistics and all kinds of stuff that I think are a little opaque with the the audio podcast platform world. So super cool. I'm, I'm excited to hear more uh, offline sometime about how, how that's going and, and engagement through that. And then from a coaching perspective, is that the right contact for people who find some interest in Unbeatable Mind and maybe, you know, resonate with you guys as, as individuals in your mission and might want to talk to you about coaching? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you can direct messages on any of our social media platforms or info at fierceplanetadventures.com. Um, reach out. We'll uh, set up a time to chat and see if we're a good fit or, if, you know, I'm a good fit or Casey's a good fit for the individual. And we'll go from there. Okay. Super cool. And then uh, next Spartan event, we got the virtual trifecta. You guys are going to hit that this weekend. Yep. Do, you have a, do you have another live Spartan coming up in 2021 where we might, we might uh, hook up in person? Yeah. You know, we uh, we've talked about this. This was supposed to happen this past year. Um, our goal is to hit um, a trifecta in the uh, mountain series, the honor series, and then Hawaii as well. Uh, in one year. So that's, that's our goal. We don't really have specific dates picked out yet, but it's going to be within that framework. So maybe Fort Campbell, Fort Carson, um, you know, um, Wyoming, I'm sorry, Montana, um, Kalispell area. Um, so we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. Okay. And, and you guys, have you, have you done one of each distance? Uh, in we have. Yeah. 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 Ultra? So no ultra yet? No, I'm sorry. No, no ultra, ultra yet. yet. No, no ultra yet. Yeah. That's the fourth, yeah. I guess the fourth yeah. format or a trifecta weekend is, mm -hmm. uh, is a different, different sort of format as well. Exactly. Yeah. We're looking forward to uh, Hawaii happening this year. Hopefully it'll happen in August. Um, well, 2021 that is because um, we're looking forward to getting back there and uh, enjoying the beaches too. Yeah. Same here. We, uh, so we'll definitely cross paths here in 2021 on one of those. We, we were in Hawaii last year. We'll be back there next year for sure. I love the trifecta format. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's so humid there. Something that I'm not used to in California and you guys, at least when you were in Colorado, weren't used to. It's, right. it's a different, you know, it's like a rainforest. It's, it was a tough yeah. one yeah. from that perspective. Fort Campbell. Have you guys done that one before? We have. Yeah. Okay. I found that to be really hot. Mm -hmm. Just the, it was July and yeah. the geography yeah. there. Fort Campbell. You just froze yeah. up a little bit there, Andy. Yeah. Oh, you're frozen. Andy's frozen. Yeah. What's your favorite, Casey, that you guys have been to? Oh, I, I think I have to say the Breckenridge was probably right. my favorite. Uh, that was the first one we did, but just the setting there, uh, going up the ski hills at Breckenridge and then seeing the views from the top. Uh, I mean, the elevation altitude was a little bit of a challenge. I mean, we were, you know, we lived there and actually hiked Fort Teeters, you know, during that time frame. And then we jumped in the race. We're like, oh, we got this. We get there. We're like, oh, my God. <laughs> Why is this so hard? <laughs> yeah, so that one kind of uh, kicked, kicked my surprise. butt, too. Yeah, so That's... it was a lot of fun, though. As much suck as we were embracing, it, it was pretty fun. That's a great course. It's um, that's the, that's the one place altitude has, has hit me in a, in a race. So Tahoe, I've been okay there a couple of times and big bear is not, uh, not quite as high, but it's very, very steep. It's just straight up the slope. <laughs> so yeah, Andy, you froze up there for a second, but I was saying, you know, Fort Campbell was a, is a hot one. I think that, that was tough. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is on the honors uh, honor series. I guess you get, you'll have Tennessee out there. Yeah. So yeah, Fort Campbell, Fort Carson is usually on the list. That's a, near Colorado Springs. That's a, it's a nice little course. It's, it's pretty hot. Um, oh, but uh, not a lot of elevation going on there. There's a little bit. Um, I think uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 
the Fort Bragg area, they usually have one. And I think maybe Dallas area too, over the last couple of years, they've had a honor series there. So we've got some to choose from. We'll see where we land. We like to try to loop it in with um, either visiting a certain location nearby or visiting family and friends, you know, as part of the trip. So we always to take that into consideration. Nice. Well, we're uh, trying to think of what else is on, on our race schedule tentatively for, uh, for right. 2021, just for, you know, listeners who kind of geek out on, on Spartan stuff like we do. Um, we've been, you know, a number of places for a number of years, but some new ones for us, we're going to hit probably the, the Canadian Rockies. There's a trifecta weekend in, up near Banff, somewhere up that. Up, oh, okay. wow. Ooh, yeah, yeah, look at that. I'm, I'm pretty put psyched that on about our that list. one. And then we were scheduled to be back in Greece this weekend, this year. Mm -hmm. So we'll, oh. we'll punt that to next year. And then we've, been, we've done the Greece trifecta once before. Amazing. Sparta, you know, just back where it all, all began. And yeah. then uh, the other thing that got canceled this year, hopefully postponed to next year, is, is my son is still at the age where he's running Spartan Kids. Mm -hmm. So Kids World Championship this year was Abu Dhabi. So that's postponed to 21. Wow. wow. What How incredible an opportunity, right? What yeah. an amazing experience that would be. That would be a new one. And you know, what? I also got, I got to shoot you guys a link. Proud father, um, Joe DeSena. I don't know if you saw this during COVID. He started doing a morning workout on mm -hmm. Facebook live two yeah. days a week. So our son, Michael Jr. He's, I think he's been the only kid that's been on there so far. So he was one of the first few uh, that did that oh, with Joe great. got on there at four in the morning, Pacific time, something mm -hmm. like that. And got a, got a few burpees and a workout in with Mr. DeSena. Sweet. Very nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's another community that's just so, so cool. So amazing. Just an amazing mindset. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love the Spartan yeah. community for mm -hmm. sure. Very supportive. Um, you know, just never quit either, right? It's, it's, always, it's always a fun challenge. And, you know, we support each other. Um, even on the race course, right? If you're doing the open heats, um, you know, there's always somebody there to encourage you on and, and help you out and push you, keep, keep pushing you forward. Yeah, there, there really is. And, and maybe to kind of bring those two worlds back together, I, I Unbeatable Mind community is, is the same way. Yeah. Although I, I find myself sort of looking around at, at others when I'm at these Unbeatable Mind training events or crucible events. And there's just such strength, but it shows through physically because of the mm -hmm. nature of the physical training that's underlying all that integrated development. But you don't always know the backstory. You know, uh, one of the coaches I just read on, I, I just see her as a very, very strong athlete. I just read on her bio, she had, you know, almost a life ending injury that she, I think, believe she had to learn to walk and talk again, mm. right? Mm. And then in Spartan, you you have the ability to go out there and everything from pros who are lapping me to you see people that are literally out there with no legs or mm. you know incredible uh, injuries that they were either you know born with or or encountered, and uh, again, sort of attitude, <laughs> amazing smile, no quit. Mm -hmm. just having fun and, and doing it. Uh, so, you know, whether you see, like I've seen uh, in Tahoe, Joe DeSena was out there after dark waiting for uh, this guy, Casey, who has no legs, waiting for him to finish after 12 hours to be there to, to clap for his finish or nice. the, uh, yeah. the para uh, event that was up in Laughlin a few years ago, people were, you know, ignoring the pros and mm -hmm. watching these teams of, of blind wheelchair amputee, athletes just getting out there and supporting each other through through obstacles the same ones that we do right able-bodied mm -hmm. athletes so right. both communities just just absolutely amazing you know it, sure. when you see that it, you know it puts things in perspective for you right and it i don't know for me i i, I see these these people as inspirations right they're it's very inspirational and they're never quit attitude you know i look back at, you know at, at what i'm doing in my life i'm like I've got no excuses. If these folks can get out there and do this, you know, and, and just don't, they just don't quit. They don't give up. They keep going at it. Then I've got no excuse not to do the same thing. Right. None of us do. Right. So. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's easy to lie to myself and go like, well, I'm, you know, I'm never going to run like Robert Killian because I'm older because I'm taller and heavier because, you know, I can make up all this stuff and, and just 
uh, debilitate myself. But, you know, I, I look at a guy with spina bifida, I look at a guy with no legs or, you know, there's lots of injuries that we don't see physically. Mm-hmm. Um, I, got, I got no excuses, right? Just left foot, right foot, keep on going. Yeah. You know, I won't go too far or too long on this, but um, when I, what was that? Fort Carson, I think it was um, Colorado Springs. Uh, when I did, um, I think I did a sprint there one day and uh, there were a couple of fellas racing that were easily into their seventies and didn't stop them right they just kept on going like you said one foot in front of the other they weren't the fastest they weren't the strongest didn't matter they just kept on going one foot in front of the other and um it was just very inspiring to see that you know in in my 50s so what you know these guys are out there doing it in their 70s and i hope i hope to be doing the same that's my goal yeah, you and me both, and that's it's a great point to wrap up on. You know, you guys as well are are an inspiration. I'm I'm really excited for you. I'm excited for what you guys have ahead of you and in, in your adventures and in the podcast. And let's definitely keep in touch. Let's get out there together on a race course next year. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, I will be in touch. We'll talk about when this podcast is going to air, but for sure we'll get all those links you mentioned up in the in the show notes. Get some people over to your to your episodes and. Uh, you know, thank you just in terms of the way you're serving, uh, additionally as unbeatable mind coaches or coach and training, uh, helping people and serving people on your mission of inspiring a hundred thousand people. So you guys are going to rock it. hundred thousand looks low to me, but <laughs> step one. Yeah. Step one, right. right. You know, step one, um, it's, it's a stretch goal, but it's, you know, it's, it's still a, a good challenge for us. So Michael, thank you so much. Much oh, appreciated. Yes. Thank you for having us on. It's been a good time. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Great to see you guys. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Likewise. Be well, be safe. Okay. Thank you again to Casey and Andy. Such a cool couple. They're doing things that most of us only kind of dream of, and they've got the courage to just get out there and do it. Go check them out at fierceplanetadventures.com, or you can find the links to that website and all their social media and YouTube and their podcast on the show notes to this episode, which you'll find at manofmastery.com slash 073. That's it for this episode, guys. Get out there and get after it. 